The modular inverse of a number a mod n is an integer x such that when we multiply x with a, it is congruent to 1 mod n. In other words, it's a number you multiply by a to get a product that leaves a remainder of 1 when divided by n. This concept is crucial in various fields, including cryptography and number theory. We'll begin this tutorial with a very simple example, and then in question two, we'll look at one that requires us to apply an algorithm known as the extended Euclidean algorithm, but more on that later. Let's begin with question one. What is the modular inverse of two modulo five? Now in literature, this is written as two with a superscript of negative one to represent the inverse, mod five. And so, in order for us to find the modular inverse, we have to make sure that the number 2 and 5 are coprime. Coprime means that the largest common divisor that they both share is 1. Normally, to find the greatest common divisor, you would need to apply some algorithm, such as the Euclidean algorithm for finding the GCD. But because 2 and 5 are smaller numbers, we can find the GCD more easily by inspection. And here's how. The positive integers that divide 2 are 2 and 1 and the numbers that divide 5 are 5 and 1. Notice that the largest number they share in common is 1. And so we say that the GCD, or the greatest common divisor, between 2 and 5 is 1. Therefore, a modular inverse does exist. Now that we know a modular inverse exists, we're going to take the number 2 and multiply it by some number x, and it should be congruent, which is represented by these three lines, to 1 mod 5. In other words, we're looking for a number x that when multiplied to 2, its product, when divided by 5, gives us a remainder of 1. Let's apply a simple guess and check method to find out what that value is. Again, in question number 2, we'll be applying the extended Euclidean algorithm instead of guessing and checking. If I set x equal to 1, we get 2 times 1, and that's equal to 2. Now let's divide this 2 by 5. What we're looking for is a remainder of 1. Using long division, 5 does not fit into 2. Subtracting 2 and 0 gives us a remainder of 2. So clearly, x cannot equal to 1. So let's try again with x is equal to 2. Multiplying 2 and 2 is 4, and we'll divide it by 5. Using long division again, 5 does not fit into 4. But this time we get a remainder of 4, meaning that x can't be 2. Let's try x equaling to 3. 2 times 3 is 6, divided by 5, using long division. 5 fits into 6 once. 1 times 5 is 5. 6 take away 5 gives us a remainder of 1. This means that the modular inverse of the following is equal to 3. But had we set x equal to 8, 13, or any other number where 5 is repeatedly added to or subtracted from 3, it would still satisfy the congruence shown here. So to generalize our answer, we can say that the modular inverse is equal to x being 3 plus some integer k times 5. Now let's try a slightly more complicated example. Question 2 asks, use the extended Euclidean algorithm to find the modular inverse of 31 mod 105. So again, this would be written as 31, or the inverse of 31 mod 105. We've been given a hint. We've been told that the number 31 and 105 are coprime. So that's one less thing that we have to verify. And again, we are looking for a number x such that when you multiply it by 31, its product, after being divided by 105, should give us a remainder of 1. And so we have the following congruence. Let's find out what that number is, but this time we'll use an algorithm rather than guessing and checking like we did in question number 1. As you can see on the table on your screen, we have four columns, x, y, r, and q. For us, the value of a is 31, and the value of n is 105. Let's go ahead and place those values into this table. By following a series of steps which I'm about to show you, what we're looking to achieve is to produce a value where r is equal to 1. Here's how we go from here. You take 105 divided by 31. Using long division, that looks like this. The quotient here is 3. 
which gives 93 and a remainder of 12. The remainder goes here. And the quotient that we just found goes here. We then take this value of 3, multiply it to the values found in this column and that column, and subtract those products from the x and y values of the row before. So 3 times 0 is 0, 1 take away 0 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3, 0 take away 3 is negative 3. And the cycle repeats until we reach an r value equal to 1. So we take 31 divided by 12. As a long division statement, it looks like this. The quotient is 2. 2 times 12 is 24. We subtract and we get a remainder of 7. So here we put in 7 and here we put in 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 0 take away 2 is negative 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 1 take away negative 6 is positive 7. Dividing 12 by 7, 7 fits into 12 once, and this leads to a remainder of 5. So we put the 1 here and the 5 here. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. 1 take away negative 2 is positive 3. 1 times 7 is 7. Negative 3 take away 7 is negative 10. So now we have 7 divided by 5. 5 fits into 7 once. 1 times 5 is 5, and we get a remainder of 2. So the quotient is 1, and the remainder is 2. We're getting awfully close to our goal. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 2 take away 3 is negative 5. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10. 7 take away negative 10 is 17. 5 divided by 2 gives us a remainder of 1. So we place our remainder here and our quotient here. Since we've reached a row where the remainder is 1, we repeat the cycle one last time. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. 3 take away negative 10 is 13. 2 times 17 is 34. Negative 10 take away 34 is negative 44. This value right here is very important. Because what this number tells us is that the value for x, or the value that satisfies the following congruence, has been found. In other words, 31 times negative 44 makes this congruence true. But typically, we don't want to write values of x that are negative. So applying the same logic from question number one, we know that we can find other x values by taking what we know, which is negative 44, and adding to that k times 105. So if I set k to 1, I end up getting an x value that is equal to 61. And that is the first positive integer that makes the congruence true. If you would like more details as to why this algorithm works the way it does, write me a comment and I would be happy to explain further with another video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you all later.